Okay, so this is um, exercise one of the diagram window course, and here we're just going to get um, a little bit of practice using some of the basic features of the diagram window that we talked about in that first video. So here's the actual exercise, um, and it's uh, straight out of physics, I guess. There's two objects that are going to undergo a perfectly elastic uh, one-dimensional collision. So if you remember uh, your freshman physics, what that means is that the linear momentum, uh, the, the total linear momentum and the total kinetic energy uh, is conserved uh, during such a collision. So you can use those two equations to calculate um, the final velocity of the two objects. So um, what you're going to do then is prepare a GUI for an ease program uh, using the diagram window. And, and what the GUI is going to do is it's going to allow the user to enter the mass and the velocity of each object. And we will use um, pounds mass and feet per second for these quantities. And then uh, you need a button that the user can use to initiate calculations. And then once calculations are done, you should display the final velocity of both objects um, also in feet per second. So that's the exercise. And uh, you can uh, maybe go off and try to do that on your own. And then we'll work through it together um, once, you've, once you've completed it. OK, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and do this uh, exercise. And so um, the first thing I'm going to do is actually make a, an ease program that does the calculations that are required. So uh, I need to enter the masses. So it really doesn't matter at this point what the masses are. Um, we said that we were going to do these in pounds mass. So uh, we'll enter them in pounds mass. M2 is, oops. And then we'll enter the velocities. So I'll put an I <coughs> subscript to indicate initial, and then we'll use F to indicate final. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to do those in feet per second. So OK, so those are entered. And we can uh, go ahead and solve. Let's look at the solution window here. And the unit's all set. I'm going to do this all in SI units, um, so I don't have to worry about uh, unit conversions. So let's see. The two equations I need are that uh, linear momentum is conserved. So that says the linear momentum of the two objects uh, before they collide oops, uh, is equal to the linear momentum of the two objects after they collide. That should be an M1. OK, so that's one equation, but two unknowns. And the other equation is uh, the kinetic energy of the two objects before they collide. So that's 1 half mv squared. <coughs> Has to be equal to the linear momentum of the two objects after they collide. That should be two uh, equations and two unknowns, and we can solve. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the um, solution. So uh, we'll set the units for the two velocities. And uh, maybe we'll set the guess values. And we'll solve again and make sure that everything looks, uh, looks right, and it does. So at this point, then, we are at a position where um, we can go ahead and start thinking about making the, the GUI in the diagram window. So let's go ahead and um, move to the diagram window. So you can see here it's already in develop mode. Here's the, uh, here's the toolbar. Um, as usual, I'm going to maybe give myself some graphical objects to, to help orient the user. So here's uh, maybe the first object. Um, probably fill it in. And let's put another object up here. So here's the second object. Uh, try to line it up. Maybe make it a different color. So let's see. I don't know. Blue. 
All right, so there's my two objects, and uh, I need inputs for the mass of these two objects and the velocity of these two objects. So uh, right away, I'm going to go here and put all of these into a dollar uh, if not diagram window clause. Uh, let's see, dollar end if. So now, if the diagram window is uh, closed, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. I can solve it. Uh, but once I put my inputs on the diagram window, uh, then it'll still solve because it'll just remove these equations. So the inputs we said we get from the uh, <coughs> text uh, object. So here's my uh, add text input uh, dialog. So I want an input variable. And I guess the first one will be M1. Um, I'm going to, um, oh, actually, before I do this, uh, let's get rid of this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, define uh, this. I'm going to go ahead and define alternate units for um, all my variables. Right. So um, I want to be able to use pounds and feet per second. So the easiest way to do that probably is in the variable information window here. So let's go ahead and uh, make these pounds, and we'll make these feet per second. And what this is going to allow me to do is um, actually have the user enter uh, <coughs> these variables in pounds and feet per second. And actually, as long as I'm here in the variable information window, I ought to maybe think about um, some reasonable limits for these variables if I want to have them. So velocities, I guess I don't care. They can be infinitely negative or positive. It's all fine. But masses clearly should not be below zero. In fact, um, you might want to make it even a little bit above that, but that's okay. So now if a user tries to enter a mass below zero, um, easel will squawk and say you can't do that. Okay, so now let's go back to the diagram window. Uh, it's in development mode. We'll go back to the uh, um, add diagram text input, and we'll go ahead and, and try to add the mass now. And because I have alternate units, you'll see I have this third option here, which is show uh, alternate units in value, and we'll hit OK. And so now we can enter the mass of object 1. And I'll put it below here in pounds mass. And let's go ahead and enter the initial velocity. Um, actually, before I do that, i got to let go of that. OK, enter the initial velocity of object 1. And yeah, 4 feet per second. OK, do the same thing for object 2. So here's my input variable mass. Okay, let's move it over here. Um, <clears throat> maybe as long as I'm making it look nice, I'll align these two things so that vertically um, they're lined up with one another. And then let's do um, the initial velocity of object 2. And again, maybe I want that lined up with this. So we'll line up their tops like that. And there you go. So now we have our GUI where I can enter these inputs. Um, I'm almost done. I would also like to be able to initiate my calculations with a calculate button. So here I hit the calculate uh, button icon on the toolbar. I want a calculate button. So I'll put that somewhere convenient. And then finally, once I've done my calculations, I'd like to show the outputs. So the two outputs are the uh, final velocities. So here I'm going to click output variable V1F. Um, and hit OK. So that's going to come down here. And then, oh, again, i got to let go of that or it'll, it'll overwrite it. OK, I'll put variable V2F uh, here. And we'll put that over here. Again, maybe line these guys up the tops. And actually, maybe I want to line all of these up. Um, <clears throat> horizontally at the middle and probably the same thing here. Line these up horizontally at the middle. So that's a, a pretty good GUI. Um, you can you know, hit calculate and initiate the calculations. Uh, you can play with these inputs. So I guess right now I um, could do something like make the velocities in opposite directions so they're sort of heading at each other and I guess what you should see then is that the, the velocities change direction so you can see that yeah V1 becomes positive 
P2 becomes negative. Um, the user can do whatever kind of thought experiments he or she wants to. So, um, you know, this is really just scratching the surface of the diagram window. If we go look at the toolbar, you can see we have barely, you know, touched any of these capabilities. Um, and that's what we'll do in uh, the remainder of this course.